LumaMap is a projection mapping application for Windows and Mac. It provides basic mapping tools and lets you create digital facades easily. With one click, you can use AI-driven presets or custom prompts to decorate a surface with projections. You need a valid license to unlock LumaMap. LumaMap can be unlocked with a valid trial license or a full license. When the software is activated, you can see information about your license from the menu by going to License, My License. Upon opening the software, you will see a checkerboard. This is known as the canvas. If no external display is connected, the canvas is sized to 1920 by 1080 by default. If an external display is connected when the application is launched, then the canvas will automatically match the resolution of the connected display. The resolution widget can be found in the bottom left of the interface, below the canvas. It reflects the current resolution of the canvas. You can also set a custom canvas resolution using the resolution widget. Enter values for width and height, then click Set. Zooming in will make the canvas larger in the interface. Zooming out will make the canvas smaller in the interface. You can zoom from the menu by going to View, Zoom In or Zoom Out. Or you can use the icons in the bottom right of the interface. You can also use shortcuts. Import an image or video into the application using File, Import from the menu or the Import icon on the toolbar. Media will be scaled automatically to ensure it covers the canvas. Any parts of the media that overhang the canvas are partially greyed out. You can replace whatever media is currently in your canvas with a new media file using the Replace feature. This can be done using File, Replace from the menu or the Replace icon on the toolbar. Note that corner pinning transformations will remain in place and be applied to the new media. Control playback of your video using the player controls at the bottom of the canvas. Play and pause the video and enable or disable looping. You can also jump to times in the video by clicking on the playback bar. You can save your project using File, Save from the menu. To save an existing project with a new file name, choose File, Save As. Open an existing project using File, Open. In this context, a display refers to any external screen device connected to your computer, such as a projector or an external monitor. This secondary display should be set up to be in extended display mode. If you connect an external display, like a projector, the application will check to see if the display's resolution matches the current canvas resolution. If there is a mismatch, a pop-up will ask you if you want to update your canvas resolution to match the display's resolution. If you choose yes, note that any corner pinning you've applied to your media will be reset. If you have multiple displays connected, you can choose which one you want to be your selected display from the menu by going to Output, Choose Display. The resolution of each connected display is shown in parentheses to help you identify which display is which. The currently selected display will be marked with a tick in the list of connected displays. Note that the application can only output to one selected display at a time. To output your canvas to your selected display, choose Output Send to Display from the menu, or use the Send to Display icon on the toolbar. Whiteout outputs white pixels from your selected display, assuming Send to Display is enabled. This mode is useful when you are checking the coverage of your projection. It's also useful for illuminating your projection surface when taking a reference photo. Enable Whiteout by choosing Output Whiteout from the menu. Additionally, you can use the shortcut. You can transform the media in your canvas using the handles at the four corners of your media. Click and drag the corner handles to move them. Outlining is the process of drawing outlines around your projection surfaces as part of the mapping process. Launch Outline Mode from the menu by going to Create, Outline, or by clicking the Outline icon on the toolbar. 
Entering outline mode will automatically make the canvas fill with white and enable center display. The line tool will also be activated by default. The outline widget contains three tools, the line tool, the freehand tool, and the erase tool. Enable the line tool with this icon. This tool will create a straight line between two mouse clicks. You can also enable or disable this tool using the shortcut. Enable the freehand tool with this icon. This tool creates a continuous stroke that follows your cursor movements. Enable the erase tool with this icon. This tool allows you to remove pixels from the canvas. In outline mode, crosshairs will appear in the output display to help you locate your cursor on your surfaces. Any outlining you have done will be stored even if you close the outline widget or disable outline mode from the toolbar. Your outlines will be recalled the next time you enter outline mode. Resetting your canvas will remove all black outlines, leaving just the white background. You can launch the AI generator widget from the menu by going to Create, AI, or by clicking the AI icon on the toolbar. The easiest way to start generating beautiful content with AI is by using the library of presets. The free trial of LumaMap only grants access to a limited number of presets. Swivel open category headings using the arrows to view more presets. Click on a preset's thumbnail to initiate an AI generation using that preset. The progress of the generation will display as a percentage on the preview pane. Generation times will vary depending on factors like internet speed. However, a generation will typically take around 15 seconds to complete. A preview of the generated image will appear in the preview pane. You can choose to upscale the preview and load it to your canvas using Upscale to Canvas. If you no longer wish to view your AI-generated image on the canvas, click Unload to remove it. Up to five recent AI generations are temporarily stored in slots, represented by these five dots overlaid at the bottom of the preview pane. Clicking a filled slot recalls that AI generation to the preview pane. Your most recent AI generation is stored in the leftmost slot. You can swivel open the advanced settings by clicking the arrow. In here, you can customize presets or initiate your own completely original AI generations. If presets are checked on, any advanced settings will apply to the selected preset when you click Generate. This allows you to customize, refine, and guide the existing presets. If presets are checked off, the text you provide in the prompt box and any other advanced settings will entirely guide a completely original AI generation, unaffected by any presets. You can supply your own positive prompt to the generator in the text box. A prompt is a text input that describes the desired content or style of the image you want the generator to create. Prompts can include specific elements, themes, colors, and styles to guide the AI in producing the final image. You can also supply your own negative prompt to the generator in the text box. A negative prompt specifies what you don't want to appear in the generated image. The keep structure strength ranges from 0 to 100% and is controlled with a slider. This parameter controls how closely the generation follows the lines and shapes of your image, its structure. Higher percentages make the generation adhere strictly to the structure, while lower values allow for a less rigid result. The seed is a number that decides the initial random noise that contributes to the AI generation. The same text prompt, when combined with different seed values, will produce slightly different variations. Generations initiated by clicking a preset will use a different random seed each time. The seed that was used is shown in the advanced settings. You can also enter a custom seed number here or use the arrows to change the seed number. Click Generate to initiate a new generation using the prompts and parameters you have specified within advanced settings. You can export what's in your canvas. This includes any corner pinning you have applied 
outlines you've drawn, or AI generations you've loaded to the canvas. Your export will be the same resolution as your canvas, as shown in the resolution widget. You can export your canvas as an image by choosing File, Export Image from the menu, or clicking the icon on the toolbar. You can set a destination and file name for your export and choose from either PNG or JPEG formats. You can export a video in your canvas by choosing File, Export Video from the menu, or clicking the Export icon on the toolbar. You can set a destination and file name for your export using the folder icon. Use the checkbox to enable or disable audio in your export. Once you click Export, a progress bar displays how much of the export process has been completed. Note that you cannot use export video when an image or outlines are in your canvas.